Now today I'm going to show you Gluster, which is a file system clustering technology. But first of all, let's quickly show you what I've got. So I've got two disks. I've got one which is for my operating system and one I'm going to use uh, primarily for my Gluster configuration. Now before I get started, I want to format this drive and I want to use uh, XFS. And XSF is not installed by default on my Ubuntu installation. So I'm going to go ahead and basically install that first off. Now, while I'm waiting for that to run, which should take a couple of minutes, um, I want to go ahead and explain that there was a two or three issues that I ran into when trying to install Gluster earlier. Uh, first, the uh, one in the repository was uh, 3.13, I think, which is a much older version. Um, and when I did run it on my 18.4, I found that it actually failed to start. So there was some errors in there, probably some incompatibilities or just maybe a bug. Um, to give you an example, I'm going to go ahead and install version 5. So there is a big jump in this. But before we do that, let's go ahead and format my 50 gig drive um, with uh, XFS. So as you can see, that that's done already. That was relatively quick because it, amongst other things it was an empty drive so nothing really to um, bother it there. Next we're going to go ahead and install the one and only dependency that you may have. I say may because in my case if I install the uh, software properties common package um, I'm going to basically get a message telling me that it's already installed. So this will depend a little bit on your installation. Maybe it's there, maybe it's not. If it's not obviously install. If it is, well, just like me, nothing really to be done there. Um, so now we're going to go ahead and start configuring our Gluster uh, repository. So it's a very simple one. We're just going to go add apt repository uh, ppa uh, Gluster and then slash uh, Gluster fs-5. Uh, um, and, and that's going to be um, primarily the repository which we're going to use. Um, there are even later ones from what I can see than 5, but 5 seem to be the stable one from what I can tell. So, And remember, that's at the time of this video. Just bear with me, it's entirely possible the package will be up to date by the time you watch this. And if you're following along at home, keep in mind 5 is the one I tested, others may work as well just haven't tested them yet. So with that done, we are now able to go ahead and install the Gluster server package. Um, and this should now be the version 5, which is the one that I was able to get working under Ubuntu 18.4. So we're just going to let the installation run here. It doesn't take very long, all things considered. In fact, um, if I compare it with the one that was in the original repository that fails, uh, you spend maybe more time watching the failure timeout than you do actually on the installation. So if it all is running as well as this, then everything's fine, particularly if you see the link issues at the end here. So next up, we're just going to create a mount point for our file system. Um, nothing spectacular in that respect, but if you haven't created a mount point before, hey, might be useful info for you. So in this case, I'm creating a file system called uh, GlustFS Bricks uh, slash Tips for IT Pros. Um, nothing special here, just wanted to kind of make it distinguishable. We're then going to go into the FS tab, and what we're going to do is simply add this file system. Now, the reason that we're adding it into the FS tab is in case of reboots or other things, we don't want to lose that uh, mount point. So here you can see we have the drive, the mount point, the file system type, and then just some defaults, and we'll take it from there. So we'll just save these changes. And since we're not going to go for a reboot, we'll just mount the drive right now. Um, so that's the dev uh, sdb in my case might be different for you really you got to kind of check for each system um, now as you can see we can now see that the drive is mounted with the mount point that we expected to see so i can go ahead now and do the next steps which is configure my cluster 
Now you should have connectivity between your cluster nodes. Now I tested mine before starting, so I know that they can see one another. Um, but in case you don't, then this would be a good step to check beforehand. Now what I've just done is add the cluster node. So in this case, although it's called Docker 1, and this node is called Docker, that's kind of where you're going to see uh, I plan to use Docker later. Uh, and this is now going to create a cluster volume. And here you can see the path for this is that we use the node name and then the uh, colon and then the, the full directory path which we're mounting. Now I've used the force switch here and usually you wouldn't, but because I've got two nodes and not three, I can't use the majority node set, so I would get an error. So I've gone ahead and used the force switch. I also can now check whether my volume is in terms of current status. As you can see, its status is not started. So I just go ahead and go uh, cluster volume uh, start uh, tips for IT pros and then we should be able to have a file system start replicating and we'll get the output then uh, telling us that it successfully started hopefully if it doesn't then i'll be surprised yep okay it works as expected excellent um, so now we can just go ahead and check the status of that and confirm basically how it is uh, running at this moment so we'll just do a volume uh, status and of our volume and then we can see here we have the output so we can see the tcp ports that are running it's online and any statuses that are outstanding so far all good um pretty much as expected and that that concludes this video for now now if you like this video please give us a thumbs up and subscribe for more content if you'd like to see more videos like this one